Hey, it's Robert with Clean Pool and Spa, and today I'm going to go over a saltwater flow switch for a saltwater chlorine cell and why it should be plumbed correctly. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and giving this video a like. Now, salt pools have many benefits, and the two big ones are this. The water does feel better. Absolutely, there's no arguing that. And number two, no chlorine to add, buy, or store. So what we have here is a conventional chlorine cell with a flow switch. And what I want to go over is where the flow switch is located compared to what the manufacturer requires. Now a flow switch is a device that will allow the chlorine cell to produce chlorine only when sufficient water flow is detected in the pipeline. Or to put it another way, the flow switch is a safety device that ensures the water is flowing through the cell before it'll start producing chlorine. So here we can see in the installation guide that the switch should have at least 12 inches of straight pipe running before it. Now this run does include the cell itself. The first example is we can see the cell is part of this 12 inch straight run, which is good. And the flow switch is located after it, which is fine. But what I would like to see is four, maybe even five times the diameter of the pipe after the flow switch in a straight run. You see, we have a two inch pipe. Now four times that diameter is eight inches of straight run after the flow switch. Five times would be 10 inches. We have a coupling going directly into sweep elbow. Now, is this all right? Sure, the cell is making chlorine and there's water flowing through the plumbing. Could it be better? Sure. The issue is we could get intermittent trouble signals because of the turbulence caused by the sweep 90 being so close to the flow sensor. The next example is the same Hayward turbo cell. We have a straight run into the cell and then we have a street 90, which I'm not a big fan of to begin with. Now we can refer back to the installation guide and it says right here that we can install the switch below the elbow right here. It's installed in the vertical position, which according to the specs is totally acceptable, but we still need a straight run of at least 12 inches before the switch. We can see here that we certainly don't have 12 inches before the switch. Again, this could give us intermittent signals due to the turbulence caused by the street 90. So to sum it up, we would need at least 12 inches of straight run before the switch, and this includes a cell, and four to five times the diameter of the pipe after the cell. So all in all, we're talking about 20 inches of straight pipe to have a flow meter work at optimal capacity. Another thing to consider, if we look at the diagram once more, according to diagram number one, the flow switch can be installed before the cell. Now, I like this approach. This means the flow switch won't be getting a heavy dose of chlorine each time the cell starts to produce chlorine. So if you opt for this approach, make doubly sure you have at least a minimum of 12 inches straight run before the switch. When the switch is installed before the cell, it takes the cell's length out of the equation. So if you're thinking about having a chlorine cell installed, especially this make and model, be sure the installer fits it per the manufacturer's requirements. And remember to inspect and or clean your cell every three months.